In this video, we'd like to look at a new concept which is called the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of a matrix A. Please look at what I've written down here. Given a matrix A, I'm basically saying that you have to find a value lambda and a non-zero column vector V, such that we'll be having such a matrix equation. And in that case, um, lambda would be called the eigenvalue of the matrix A and uh, corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda, this vector V will be called the eigenvector of A. And uh, please look at my definition. One of the important points is that we want to look at non-zero column vector V. We don't want to look at zero vector here. And um, it's not easy to find such a lambda and the eigenvector V by random guessing because uh, A can be quite complicated, especially when A has a big size. And the other fact is that you may be wondering why we have to find such a strange pair of quantities, like one is eigenvalue, the other one is eigenvector for a matrix A. Surprisingly, uh, these quantities and these concepts are closely related to the matrix properties of the matrix A, but we'll explore these kind of things a little bit later. For now, we would like to find the vector and the value corresponding to the matrix A. Conceptually, please look at it this way. The current matrix equation can be turned around. I mean, I can actually move the right-hand side to the left-hand side like this, right? Now you see this matrix equation basically means the right-hand side only contains the zero column vector. And I would like to manipulate it a little bit on the left-hand side. Please recall that the identity matrix is basically like one, right? So um, if you artificially add the identity matrix here, which is multiplied to the column vector V, it doesn't really change our original term lambda times V. It doesn't change it at all because the identity matrix serves as the identity, like number multiplication by one, right? And uh, what I'm doing now is basically, you're having a matrix A minus lambda times identity. This matrix is multiplied to the column vector V to get a zero vector. If you write this in such a matrix form, you'll notice that um, because of the fact that the right-hand side is actually a zero vector, it basically means it's a homogeneous system, right? And please recall some concepts here. Um, when you try to solve this system for any homogeneous system, uh, there are basically two possibilities. Do you remember that? Uh, the first possibility is that there's exactly one solution, and because it is a homogeneous case, exactly one solution basically means the only solution allowed is the zero solution vector, right? And the second possibility is that there are infinitely many solutions, and in that case, usually we have to write all the solutions down in the parametric forms. And please recall this fact. We are trying to find the lambda such that we have some non-zero eigenvector, which makes this matrix equation satisfied. So let me put it here again. You can really think of the eigenvector V as the solution vector in the homogeneous system, right? I've told you already, I only want non-zero solution. What does it mean? It means I want to force our system to have infinitely many solutions, right? And it means what in terms of determinant? And um, let me put it this way. Basically, because we want the system to have infinitely many solutions, basically we want the determinant of our current coefficient matrix, which is A minus lambda times identity, to be zero. And this condition is equivalent to the fact that, um, mathematically speaking, now basically you have to solve for the lambda, which we call the eigenvalue in this determinant equation, right? And let's look at a concrete example now. So please look at the given two by two matrix here, and please look at the corresponding determinant equation now. I would love to look at uh, this equation. And please look at this matrix. This matrix is basically this one, right? So basically we can write our matrix as three minus lambda in the top left spot, and the remaining spot are something like that. And now, basically I want this matrix to have determinant zero. Please look at my equation here, which means that let's look at the determinant of such matrix now. It's basically the same as uh, AD minus BC. If you recall the determinant formula for the two by two matrix, it means I can look at uh, determinants like this and I want this determinant to have zero. And it basically means now you have to solve this equation, you see, for lambda. And I trust that you're able to solve this equation quite quickly because it's really like a 
polynomial of degree 2 in lambda, right? We don't have to do anything. I can directly write the answer down. Basically, lambda is either 3 or lambda is actually minus 1. Basically, there are two answers to this determinant equation. So what does it mean? Basically, now you have two eigenvalues for our current matrix, right? And to find the corresponding eigenvector, it is slightly easier. For example, we can look at the current matrix A minus 3 times identity now, which is basically this matrix. And you have to solve for the corresponding homogeneous system by using this matrix. And the non-zero solutions that come out of this linear system would be our eigenvector. So um, let's solve it together. The first equation has nothing, right? Uh, so we just have to look at the second equation. And as I said, uh, we expect that this system must have infinitely many solutions. So we can try to use a parametric form now. If I set the second variable be t, and x basically minus 4t equals 0. It basically means x, we can write it as 1 over 2 times t, right? So basically now it means for the first eigenvalue 3, we arrive at the solution vector, which is uh, basically 1 over 2 in the x spot, and for the y, is basically 1, the whole vector times t. So please try to understand this solution. This is a solution space, which is one-dimensional. And please reco recall what you learned in the node space in the couple of videos earlier, and uh, we need one free parameter to write all the solutions down. That's why we call this solution space to be one dimensional. One dimensional solution space means there's one vector which acts as the direction of this line on the space. And basically it means uh, we can write the eigenvector to be this one. And because of the fact that we only care about the direction, right, which means uh, we are free to change the t. And sometimes by convention, we prefer to look at um, integers instead of some fractions. So you can multiply both coordinates by two. Basically, um, I can present the eigenvector like this. If you multiply both spots by two, it is allowed. Because t is free to change, right? You can choose another t. And in any way, I mean, this vector and this vector, they have the same direction anyway. So it basically gives you a sense that in eigenvector, when we try to find it, we only care about the directions. Because the solution space itself, you see, is one dimensional, right? There's so many solutions there. But what we care is, is the solution. So um, it means the first pair is done for the first eigenvalue three. We understand that we have eigenvector one, two here. And let's find the second eigenvector based on the second eigenvalue minus one. So we are getting a matrix like this. If we look at the matrix A minus lambda i, when lambda is actually minus one. And same as the last problem, you are asked to solve such a homogeneous system. We expect to have infinitely many solutions. You can look at the first equation, 4x equals zero, right? Which means x is zero. The second equation means what? Eight times x equals zero. It gives us the same information, which is x equals zero. What does it mean? It means y is clearly free. It means we can set y be t, right? We understand x must be zero. It means the solution, we expect to have infinitely many solutions. We can write it down by using the parameter t. x is zero, y is t. Basically, the direction of this one dimensional solution space is something like this. So I can use the eigenvector be zero one now. Basically, it means for the second eigenvalue, which is minus one. The second eigenvector is basically zero one here. And um, that's the answer to this problem. Let me make a conclusion here. So you see basically for this two by two matrix, we have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. And we can look at another example now. So you see for this matrix, which is three by three, I would like you to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for such a matrix. And once again, it comes down to solving this determinant equation for the lambda here for the eigenvalue first. And let's look at this matrix. So I believe you can simplify such a matrix to get a simplified form. And now we have to set the determinant of such a matrix to be zero. So let's write down the de determinant here. Please recall that um, we're looking at a three by three matrix. So determinant formula is slightly more complicated. And there are various ways to find it. Depends on the way you use it. But um, I just write it down here. So you see, uh, please look at the current equation now, uh, similar to the last example. We look at the polynomial equation in lambda, and now you see uh, basically the polynomial on the left-hand side has degree 3. And um, let's try to solve it together. 
I think by algebraically, we can pick out this one as a common factor. So we'll get in the following step S. So at the end, we should be getting only two eigenvalues because the lambda equals two is repeated. And there's another eigenvalue one. So there are only two eigenvalues now for the current case. And for each eigenvalue, we have to look at the corresponding linear system. So let's say for the first eigenvalue, please note that this one is the repeated solution in the current polynomial equation. And let's try to solve the corresponding homogeneous system now. So I think it's quite obvious that if you take a look at this matrix, um, if you in particular just look at the row space, if you recall what you learned in the video about the row space, um, this row space has dimension one only, because if you look at the rows, row one, row two, row three, all have the same direction, right? So it, so it means you get actually just a one dimensional row space. And if you recall the rank nullity formula, it gives you the hint that uh, the nullity must be two. And nullity, nullity two basically means you need two free parameters to write all the solutions down. Basically, it implies that in such a case, we actually have two eigenvectors. These two eigenvectors are two linearly independent vectors corresponding to the fact that you actually get two dimensional solution space. And let's try to solve it now. If you look at the first equation, it is zero equals zero. The second equation is zero equals zero, right? And the middle equation is the only one that gives us some useful information, which is x plus zero plus z equals zero. And I think, um, you see, we can actually set the last variable be t. And it means now x is minus t based on equation two, you see. And the y is not zero. Y is free to change because we haven't seen anything about the limitation of y here. Basically, we can set y be the second free parameter. So let's write down all the solutions together as we expected. Uh, it's a two-dimensional solution space. And of course, you can separate the two variables like this. So in that case, you get a two-dimensional space. And the two dimensions are basically based on the fact that you actually have two parameters, you see. Basically, you get something like this. You see, these two vectors obviously uh, can generate a two-dimensional space. It means you basically now have uh, two eigenvectors. And, um, I'll try to put a quick note here. And so please look at my note in the red color. Uh, it's the same as what I said. Because the nullity is two, it means we need two parameters, like this case, to write the solutions down. Automatically, we understand that there should be two eigenvectors corresponding to this current eigenvalue. And let's solve for the remaining eigenvector here. So please look at the current matrix. You have to solve the corresponding homogeneous linear system by using this coefficient matrix. And you can take a quick look. Can you see the rank of this matrix? Rank basically means the dimension of the row space. I hope you can see that you see the row one and row three, they are basically on the same direction because they are multiple of each other. Of course, the row two is not the same. If you, if you view it this way, the rank of such a matrix now is basically um, two, right? And by the rank nullity formula, it implies that the R plus N is three. Basically, it means N must be one in the sense that you need one parameter to write all the solution down. It basically means we know that there's only one single eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue. Let's find this eigenvector out by solving the corresponding homogeneous linear system. So you can look at the current system now after certain rotations, and you can see the last equation has no meaning to us. We can start looking at the system by the second equation, which is y minus z equals zero. And we can set the last variable be t. And it means y is basically t also, based on the second equation, right? And let's look at the first equation. The first equation is minus x minus 2z equals 0. And it basically means x is minus 2t, right? And it means our solution vector can be written by one single parameter, same as our expectation by the use of the rank nullity formula, right? And the direction of this uh, vector governs the solution space is minus 2, 1, 1. And that's the last eigenvector we look at. We can call it V3. And as a final conclusion to this problem, so you see there are basically two eigenvalues, but three eigenvectors. We will look deeper into the theory behind the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the next couple of videos. But just one fact for you. Uh, we usually solve the eigenvalues based on certain polynomial equations. And in this case, we are actually solving a degree three polynomials in lambda. And please recall the fact that uh, we understand that 
the lambda equals to is actually a repeated solution. And actually due to this fact, because it is repeated two times, uh, it gives us a chance to actually have two different eigenvectors. But anyway, we'll try to explore more about the properties in the later video.